You must be thinking, what are some tactics to be successful in CRNA school? What are some strategies to be successful in CRNA school? As well as if you're considering become, going into CRNA school and becoming a CRNA, I think this video might be able to help you and give you some advice on what worked for me and what I, some things that I've learned throughout the years. So definitely keep watching. My name is Christine and welcome to a new video. If it's your first time here and you want to become a CRNA or grow your CRNA career, start now by subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss anything. So yes, I am an experienced CRNA for many years and I love what I do. And I want you to love what you want to do in life. If you want to become a CRNA, if you want to become an ICU nurse, if you want to become a nurse, if you want to do anything in the world, it doesn't matter. As long as you're happy with what you're doing and you love working at a specific facility, a specific area, as long as you're happy at the end of the day, that's all that matters. Another thing to say is that age is just a number. You know, we might be thinking, oh, I'm in my 20s, my 30s, my 40s. Should I go back to school? Should I become a CRNA? If you want to do something in life, it doesn't matter what age you are. A lot of people have done CRNA as a second career. So it's nothing that's not normal. It's okay. You can do that if you, if you desire to. But I'm here to say to you that I love it and you can love it too as long as you shadow and you do your research. So what are some of the tactics that I'm gonna talk about today? Well, I'm gonna get all into that right now. Hi guys, and, grow, and remember to click the thumbs up button for my mom. <laughs> She's a good CNA. So let's get back into it. So you might be thinking, what are some tactics that work for me? What can work for you? And what are some things that I've learned that actually can work for you in the future? So just always remind yourself that um, these tips may work for you, may not work for you. You should try it and see if it works. If it doesn't work, try something different. So let's get started. So the first thing I would say is when you're in this lecture, it's important to record all your lectures. Yes, you may see yourself, ugh, oh, recording lectures. It seems like a lot of work. Honestly, I recommend you recording them because I feel some of the things that are spoken in class is essential to anesthesia practice. There's a reason why your professors are mentioning these specific principles. Some of the information that you may be learning in class may not pertain to your exams, but it will pertain to clinical practice as well as it can pertain to your board exams. So think about this too. A lot of the information is going to correlate to your board exam. And also, just to let you know, a lot of the information that is discussed in class will be on your exams. may not be all of it, but some of the things and the principles will be discussed in your exams. So now, what do you do after that? Record your lectures. So if you're, think for example, you have a long commute to go home, you can play your lectures then. Listen to, listen to that information, you know, um, that was discussed in class. As well as when you're studying at home, some of the principles that you may have been able to, to catch when you're writing notes um, you can listen to it and then actually take that information and when you read your textbook, look more further into it. Really understand those principles. As well as, of course, you need to read, the, read your textbooks. But some of the principles are going to be put a lot of emphasis on. Okay? And that's where you take that information from class that may have talked to you maybe broadly. Now it's your turn to take that information and look into it more in depth. That helped me. It definitely helped me be more focused and to really understand a plan of my studies, studying strategies. As well as when you're thinking about your lectures, when you are in class, you should be taking notes. Some people are different. Maybe you are a person that needs to sit there and just listen and not take notes. That might work best for you. So then in, a, in, that, in that sense, it's good to record your lecture. So you can just pay 100% on the lecture and get that information put onto you. So when you go home, you may listen to that information again. And then at that point, you should write notations. I think that might work best for you. Or you might be in class and you're a person that loves taking notes. For me, when I learn, I need to write my notes. For me, I need to, when I study, I need to see that in from the, the words in my handwriting because for, there have been studies that have shown that when you write your, your, you know, your notes or you rewrite certain concepts in your own writing and then you read that, your brain is able to absorb that information much better, more efficiently. So. There are studies out there, I mean, you can look it up, but it's definitely shown that it's really good to write your notes down in your own writing. So when you're in class, write down your notes, and if you don't catch certain concepts, it's okay. You can also listen to your lecture later. 
and review it. So that definitely helped me and I feel I can help you. Another thing, I feel it's important to make sure you're staying hydrated. So when you're in class, definitely having hydration, having water, definitely make sure you're, you've eaten a good meal, that you're, you know, your brain ha has has food to definitely absorb the information. Because I remember it in class when I was in lecture. There'll be times where students don't eat, they don't drink, they don't take care of themselves because of course it's very stressful. You have you don't even have much time when you're, you know, you have to study for, you know, for exams, you have to be there for lectures, then you have clinical um, clinical practice. And you feel like, should I sit down and eat? I mean, I have no time. But you gotta take care of yourself. You need to take care of yourself in order for you to really absorb that information. And you know, eating and hydrating is very important. Okay, so what I did, because I know you're thinking, like, what should I be eating? Well, I recommend like smoothie, something that's light, you know, salads, fruits. Um, and if you do want to have like high carb food, which is food, is, high carbs is important. We should have that after lecture because, you know, you don't want to be sluggish in class and falling asleep, you know, that's the worst. <laughs> now, another thing also as important that you need, need to sleep. Sleep is essential. So... You may have your lectures and you get that information and of course there be situations where your brain has absorbed so much so much information that you feel like you need a break yes take breaks I do recommend reviewing that information maybe at night maybe just browsing through the information before you go to sleep at night just take maybe 15 20 minutes just browse through the information that you was learned in front of you and then go to sleep so a lot of times the stuff that you are reviewing before you go to sleep you go to sleep you're able to absorb that information. Sleep and rest is so important when you are in school and when you're absorbing the information, as well as taking breaks. So maybe saying, for example, you're with your friends and you go to, you know, go to the library. Yes, yeah, so you want to study and you want to study efficiently. But to really get efficiency out of studying is taking a break. So maybe work for 30 minutes or so, 30 to 45 minutes giving yourself a 15 minute break so you can take a rest maybe take a walk around the, you know the, the library maybe get yourself some food get yourself some hydration maybe just have a conversation with a classmate about certain material that you're learning and take a break that definitely helps with the absorbing the information another thing i recommend is that setting up group discussions with your classmates you know so say for example you study certain information a certain concept that no matter what you've done and you read it over and over it's just not absorbing it's just not sticking. And that's normal because there's gonna be someone in your class that's gonna understand that information quickly versus you may not understand that information as quickly. But in this, you know, again, remember, there's a certain concept that you'll know better than other people, and that's okay. So what you do is the give and take information. You're a team, you know, you're a group, you know, and you all wanna be successful, you wanna help each other. So what I recommend is writing notations of stuff that you don't understand and telling your classmates too with information they don't understand. And you come together, maybe say, say to yourself, okay, we have 30 minutes or 45 minutes where we're gonna sit together, we're gonna go through these certain topics together and review it and then move forward. And so you can help each other and give that information back and forth with each other. Because I honestly, for me, that helped. So for example, I had a classmate in my class that she had triplets. She had three babies, okay, triplets, okay, they're babies. And I had a newborn baby when I was in school. And yes, it was stressful and it was a lot of work, but you can do it, you know? You can really put your mind to doing anything. You can have children, have a family, and go back to CRNA school, you know? You can do it, just gotta have the support, have the diligence, and to say to yourself, I'm struggling, I'm stressed, but I'm gonna do it, it's temporary, it's not permanent. Permanent is to becoming a CRNA and loving what I do. So for her and I, we had this common ground with each other that we both had children, we had families, so what we would do, this may work for you, is that I had to go home. I would have my classes, I may go to the library for a little bit, but I had to go home to my family. I, for me, family is everything. So I wasn't, I wasn't able to really stay around in, in school you know, overnight or study, you know, in school long term. So I had to go home. So me and my classmate, we would make plans like, hey, at eight o'clock at night for maybe like 45 minutes, we're gonna take this time to review certain concepts together. So we would say, we'd say for example, certain concepts, we would browse through the book and kind of question each other on the concept. And it helped us, 
helped me. We would bounce information off each other. We would re review information. We'd read a textbook together. Yes, we would read a textbook together and go through paragraph by paragraph and also review it. Another thing I would do next time if I was to do it over again, I would record, talk to each other, make sure you're both on the same page and record um, your discussions on the phone because when you're discussing with each other, you're really explaining it in detail with each other and really breaking the concepts down, which is important. You need to understand the foundation. So do that, record it, and then listen to that information because then you can listen to it again and be like, yes, I remember we were talking about this. This makes sense. And I feel that would really help you when you're studying maybe by yourself. So that was definitely a technique that I would recommend. Also, YouTube. You're on YouTube right now watching my video. And it's not just my video. It's your video. It's for you. And we're a family. So I recommend using YouTube as a resource. If there's certain principles, certain concepts that you don't understand, Google it. Use YouTube. Watch videos. For me, that works for me. So I remember when I had my physics and biochemistry class that was focusing on anesthesia practice. But the basic, inf the basic fundamentals to physics, to biochemistry. There are people who are majors, who are teachers, and they're really good at breaking down that information. Use them, you know? A lot of those principles, they can break it down. A lot of the math calculations I needed to go through again. Um, it helped me with using a person from YouTube. And I would use their resource, maybe it's a five minute video, it would break it down, I would write notations down, and keep it for myself. It really helped me. It really helped me understand it. Also, a lot of the principles in anesthesia practice. There's basics to these medications. You gotta think about these medications, um, the pharmacology, the mechanism of action, the contraindications. Also, your pathophysiology, certain disease processes, the medications, the management. There's so many people on YouTube that can give you that information. Utilize it. Five minute video can make a world of a difference because I feel, I think that will be effective. Also remind yourself that you have professors that have office hours. Utilize them, they're there for you. They're there to educate you. And so, say for example, you've you know, reviewed your information, you've listened to the lectures, you've met with classmates, maybe you've done some phone conversations, you've done YouTube, and there's still some information that's not clicking, set up an appointment. Maybe what I recommend to maximize your time Write down a list of the specific questions you have so you're prepared. So when you meet with your professor, they may have 30 minutes, they may have an hour, and you can go through his concepts and make them break it down for you so you understand it easily. I recommend that. I feel that can work for you. Now, a lot of these principles are, from my experience in CRNA school, but it's also principles of basics of even nursing school because these are the same things that I've learned throughout the years that I've really maximized on when I was in school, in CRNA school, but I've learned over the years that has worked for me. Another thing, always review your exam. So say for example, you took an exam, maybe you didn't do the best, it's okay. You're here to grow, you're here to learn, right? And you're here to get better. So I recommend always looking through your exam, setting up an appointment with your professor to go through your exam. Understand what you got right, understand what you got wrong, and how you can learn from those mistakes. Because when you have your final exam, a lot of your final exams are cumulative in a sense that they may have questions from your previous exams. They may have, they may have noticed that, hmm, certain students, you know, looking at the exams as overall, certain students got these questions wrong. Certain students got these questions right. And they may take some of those questions and put it on your final exam. So nice thing is, you reviewed your exams, you reviewed your answers you got right, what you got wrong, you understand it. So when you have your final exam, you have some questions that you're gonna get right, increase your, your grades. Honestly, it's, this is in general, when you think about school in general. So that's what I recommend you doing, a tip and trick that I, I've learned um, to help you be successful. Another thing I could think about, so saying for example, you're in clinical practice and you're thinking about how I can help myself be more successful. A lot of the stuff that you are in clinical practice, sometimes they're different than what you're learning in a textbook. However, try to pair them together because there are certain principles that you're learning in clinicals that pair well with um, the didactics that you're gonna be you know, learning in school. Also, a lot of the clinical experiences that you're having, I definitely recommend taking a notepad and writing notes. 
and keeping track of the patients you have, maybe the comorbidities, what type of anesthetic plans you've done, um, what type of clinical experiences that's unique to these specific cases. Keeping track of that is great because when you have your, your board exam, um, when, you, when you're about to graduate, a lot of that information will hit home with you. And a lot of that information will help you connect the didactic, the clinical experience, and cohesive, the, make them more cohesive when you're doing your board exams. A lot of the questions on board exam are going to be a situation. You'll go through like a, a clinical situation and kind of pair it into a question. So definitely taking, you know, clinical experience, you know, seriously, of course, but also taking notes on stuff you've learned because you, when you are studying for your board exam or even when you're studying for things in class, because sometimes some of the things in clinical practice will actually pair well with the information that you're learning in school. Keeping track of it because you never know. You may review it one day and things might just hit home, make everything digest easily, make things make sense for you. Especially when you're practicing as a CRNA, you can utilize, this, you can utilize that information to help you with certain things. Like, hey, you know, I remember doing something, a certain anesthetic for a patient, and it worked well. Hmm, maybe I could do that now. So you can always use that information long term, okay? I hope this information helped you and give you some strategies to be successful when you are in CRNA school, as well as nursing school, as well as becoming a CRNA in general. So if you want to learn more about CRNA and how to learn your CRNA career, definitely click one of these videos over here, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.